What's good, everybody, and hey, welcome hey, hey. to a little track review here at Behind That Soul. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. I am your lady friend, Bonnie. And today, we are going to be talking about As If We Existed by the Soliloquists of Sound. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the reason we are doing this is because part of our Patreon Parks is a monthly track review. And if you want to get a monthly track review, typically it's behind, it's a Patreon only, but for the homeboy, Ismail Gadamsi. <laughs> Who requested this? We're putting it public. That's right. And if you want to participate and hear our thoughts on any particular song, it's a good way for you to go about doing that. Is yeah. all I'm trying to say. This is sort of like a, a look behind the scenes, I guess, of a, a Patreon, so you can see what it's like. And uh, you get the power to tell us what to do once a month, as opposed to the comments where people request stuff <laughs> and then life gets busy and sometimes we want exactly. to do it, but it is what it is. But still, the Soliloquist of Sound is a group I've never personally heard of before this request, yep. which is kind of why I do like going through these. It does expose us to a lot of new music. Um, they're from Orlando, Florida, a little hip-hop collective. Yep. And uh, I'd never heard of them before. It never heard a song. Went in completely blind. This is based blind. off of the same titled album. And uh, I had no idea what to expect. And it was quite positive and joyful all things considered yeah. like hopeful almost it was really like i just you never know what to expect with ismail with his request <laughs> kind of like all over but what what do you what did you think of this song um i think it's really cool i like the flow i thought it was like really like lovely um i like the beat i felt like there was like good energy on this track um it has something that like makes me like i can't i don't couldn't pinpoint the instrument uh, but it makes me feel like it's inspired by, like, 1960s, like, music. Like, it made me, like, think of the doors. Like, there was something in it that, like, maybe, like, the key keyboard or something. I don't know. But whatever. It sounded cool. Um, I love the doors. So, cool. Um, and so we've got uh, Alexandra. I think that's how it, how it says. And Swamberger. Yeah. Um, so we've got them. And uh, she's kind of saying, like, she wants us to listen to the message in her words. And freedom is a choice. And, you know, you can basically just do whatever you want, basically. And she's hoping to see a shift in perspective and wants to be seen as like you know smart as she is because she's giving like strong advice um they want to make back everything um that was taken from them essentially um but in like a smart way they want to like kind of have that kind of power not not necessarily power but like that strength and kind of take back that what should belong to them essentially and, um, you know, they're talking about like, you know, that they missed out when other, others succeeded and it's enough of that. It's, you know, it's their time and kind of like what goes around comes around. So don't forget about that. And sort of like, you know, we may not have always had the power, but we're going to get it now. And, um, you know, all people succeed when all people succeed. And I think that that's sort of like, you know, this came out uh, September 26, 2006. So um, it's sort of similar to the same message that we're, you know, that we hear with like the Black Lives uh, Matter movement, like that kind of thing. Like, you know, not just one type of person needs to succeed and all the rest are below them. And like, you know, let's elevate everybody together. You know, like we can all succeed. And I think that that's sort of like the message that's being presented here. Uh, so I think that that's kind of cool because it was, you know, forward thinking for sure. Um, yeah. So if only some are allowed to like learn and grow. Um, and like kind of have like those sorts of like opportunities um, and others are not able to like have them, then I think that that's sort of like a detriment to society as a whole. Like that's kind of like the issue it here. And, you know, just talking about that, everybody should have same sort of equal opportunities and, you know, everybody has like value and potential, um, you know, but some people are made to think that like their worth isn't as worthy as other people's worth just by you know whatever um and you know like that's kind of shitty and they're saying you know like let's make let's put everybody on the same page and i think you know that's kind of what it is and they're you know like they're not angry about this <coughs> um but they are like passionate and hopeful and you know and that their message will uh kind of help snowball a change uh you know that something's going to happen and uh yeah i mean i think that that's really great and i like the cheering at the end it's kind of like kind of hopeful and like uplifting and it just sounds encouraging and it's just like you know sometimes it's just fun to go woo and like you know like you're, like you're winning and i think that you know a lot of things are negative and i think just kind of having that like kind of like happy 
cheer at the end just for like yourself and for others and i think that that's kind of i don't know it's cool it's uh definitely like a nice song it has like a nice flow and cadence and it's super like interesting and has a really positive message i think so i get it a 4.4 on five what do you think um, I like it. I definitely took that first verse in such a different way. Oh, maybe could be. It's because I'm a, I'm one of those smarty pant motherfuckers. But like, <laughs> I wish you'd listen more. Just a minute. Has been said to me. Previous to Genius Killing Vision and its grip, and I'm like, oh wow, what a weird lyric. Not weird in a bad way, but how does Genius kill Vision? I'm like, I know how Genius kills Vision. So people tend to have like Vision. And they, they believe they see things in life and they mm-hmm. want to go for it. But then genius is where I imagine the really smart people come into the equation. And everybody's an expert and everybody's trying to tell you what's up about what's up about what's up. Mm-hmm. And I guess I go through this a lot in my life now because I got vision. And, everybody, and I think it's meant to be like your genius kind of diminishing my vision. And it's yeah. like when you don't realize that all these efforts to just know everything and be smart and almost go too analytical with it might kill the mm-hmm. vision of the situation. Okay. Placing blame upon the soulful unafraid. We knew to trade danger of an elite game. Technology advanced, but now insane with power. So I look at it like if you, you look at the state of 2006, it's the beginnings of this internet like takeover and technological analytics driven world. It's not like quite where it is yet, but everything from music to all entertainment is becoming data and analytics driven in a way yeah. that's never before. People are almost using this kind of knowledge to re invent the world so i wonder if a little bit it's like she's like yo we're on this more grassroots keep it with the people love tip and, you know and she goes when you listen to how things are supposed to be done by all the like the corporate types with all the fancy ways you know yep makes lost and past syntax we have today that we have to deal with what's the problem with my genius too attached to ever leave it and I think that little section is like we're all so caught up on old ideas and ingratiated this is and that's yeah. that like genius in and of itself, the way things are it kind of trips it up. So I think it's like an aloof way to kind of explore what we know and the geniuses of who's smart, like an Elon Musk character. That guy's not actually that like smart in everything. He's mm-hmm. actually just really smart at a few things and really stupid at everything else. If you really listen to him because he says the dumbest yep. shit. I've seen him dance. No, no, but he says some <laughs> dumb stuff and he doesn't listen to anybody. Yeah. Like he listens to no one and his own genius actually kills his vision. There have been multiple times where Elon Musk stock prices and shit have dropped because he's a fucking moron, which basically got him fired from his role and rebranded and he doesn't even have access to his Twitter directly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this is when your genius kills your vision. When you, like, lose yeah. sight of it all because you don't want to listen to, like, regular people and common sense. And I think us smarty pants have a hard time with that shit. And I like how it switches from Alexandra to Swanberger and just, like, cuts it. And they both, like, split the verse, you know? And I don't know. I feel like his stuff didn't hit me as hard. Um, it was good. It okay. followed up through. Um, it's fine. Just kind of, I feel like he's more on that spiritualistic tip, like, you know, pay respect upon the dead incurred by non belief when soul is speaking, called simplistic by name, familiar to those regulars who think intelligence is a competition. It's like the same kind of idea, actually. It's, like, it's hard for me to elaborate further because I feel like we're just expanding on the same point. Yeah. But I do think a lot of people um, diminish a lot of folk who don't agree with you because my smart is better than your smart. Uh, the way I frame this at work is a lot of times. Like, yeah, you know, I'm 33, you know, in a tech company with a bunch of old men. And when I say, well, I mean, like f- late 40s, you know, people who are not like savvy of the tech world, which is ironic, like they they know how to make an app, but don't understand the Internet very well. So it's fucking <laughs> weird. They know how to convert dollars on the Internet really well, but they don't have vision for it. It's just like right. you got genius. You can do all these things. You're so fucking great at it all. But with no vision, it doesn't tie it together. But often what ends up happening is a lot of smart people compete to be right rather than try to work together to like solve the problem, you know? Like, yep. so they spew tools to ask the problem instead of asking how they can aptly solve themselves, mm-hmm. how you can look inside yourself and reformat shit. Mm-hmm. And this is fair. Even in my Montreal local hip hop scene, everybody's sitting there going, bleep, 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 rappers all suck, bleep, bleep, nobody listens to my shit, bleep, 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 bleep. But nobody's doing <laughs> shit to solve the problem except your boy. I started interviewing motherfuckers and shit. Yep. I'm all about that 
solving problems, yo, for real. My new mission is to teach Montreal hip hop that Twitch is their friend and the internet is their friend. And people honestly like things more than just people who rap because yep. the whole world raps. Y'all watching this could pick up a mic and probably bust out a tune if you really wanted to. The threshold to get in this game is fucking low. To be good at it, very different. So the question is if everybody can rap, how do you make yourself interesting? Yeah. How can we work together to do it? Like a lot of the ethos in this song is really fascinating because it parallels a lot of like what actually works to grow collectives and communities. Yeah. And they're an example of that, right? Like they are in a, co a collective. That's big facts. They even had a built-in production team. And then the chorus is whatever, love, where is it at? It's not just cliche. Imagine that. Freedom's a choice. Is it you? It's as easy to say as to do. And to that, I call bullshit. <laughs> um, that's privileged people speak. You grew up in the middle class is what I learned in this fucking chorus. You did not grow up fucking poor. You ain't come from fucking welfare. That's all I hear in that chorus. And maybe it takes away from like the message. But anybody that's like, love is easy is actually <laughs> wrong. Love is fucking hard and it's a war. And to actually learn to love people if you're a miserable fuck could take you like a decade. <laughs> it's so much harder then freedom's a choice. No, being free of the psychological fucking chains of a systemic dec like centuries of systemic oppression is a little bit more than freedom's a choice, okay? Yeah. They're right, freedom's a choice, but I made that choice and it's fucking hard. It's not as easy to say as to do. That is a lie. I'm sorry if anyone watching this disagrees with me because typically <laughs> people come through and they're like fans of the song. But that's the fluffiest shit ever. The verses are content for days, and I really yeah. agree with them. But don't do not do that. Like, the Beatles are garbage to me because so much of their lyrics are fluffy fucking, like, like love is all you need. Fuck you. You need money <laughs> to live in this world. You need a career path. You need a reason to, like, guide your spirit. And so you need a little more than love. Love is an important focal point, okay? I love a lot of shit. But I also needed to like a lot of other things. Like it's just one of many tools in the toolkit, okay? Yeah. Because here's the thing. Sometimes like you also just need to, like strength or you, you need health. Like you need to be yeah. healthy. And maybe you could argue it, but that's just loving yourself. I'm like, fuck out of okay. here. Like now you're going into <laughs> shit where you have to translate it so deep that it becomes a vapid statement. And it makes happy okay it makes middle class people who are comfortable with life feel good to hear shit like that because the rich people don't give a fuck and the poor people are too miserable to fucking care about this <laughs> shit it isn't their reality it's not just a choice to figure out how you're gonna find that dollar to feed your kid when the bills is like that's not love is a choice shit that is yo the system's fuck shit okay like like COVID's yeah. a good example of that so i'm sorry for my random rants about the chorus but that kind of shit i find really fluffy but the principle of what they're saying that they expand upon in their verses is really good. Mm -hmm. What if I said, what if love said, hear me out a bit before future comes around, the way to give us back the past we believe is gone, but the trail is circular. You guys don't want the past that's gone. The past that's gone had women getting beat and a lot more racism. It's fucking worse. Yep. I don't know. Like, what the fuck past is anyone talking about here? That's just negligence in history. Sorry if this is where this is going, <laughs> but like these viruses, I think about them are kind of weird. Uh, we're working for a bigger moment, but direction cut the children up a filler. Plus, depression is a super song coming out the hand that doesn't write for you or yours. Like, wait, what? Like, what does that mean? So we're working for something bigger, you know, and then everything's kind of fucked, right? Direction cut the children up a filler. I don't actually know what that line means. Maybe I'm missing that point. What does that mean to you? Maybe there's some. Cut the children up with filler? I don't know. So we're working, but so I guess maybe children like are you're being, just being taught the same kind of or filler bullshit. nonsense. Maybe that's it. Okay. Plus depression and a super song coming from the hand that doesn't write for you or yours. So I guess plus people are spewing negative messaging out from like their hands as though somehow the media and the songwriters is the biggest source of fucking bad influence in people. I mean, sure, yeah. that's a way to look at it. And it's a way to look at it from the perspective of somebody, again, who feels this middle class hippy dippy activism. Because that's <laughs> what this feels like to me, middle class activism. <laughs> Because, um, yo, if you're like, it's like to blame rap music for society's problems yeah. is stupid. We know that now in 2020. And I feel like a little bit that's what that, those bars were about, right? Like, like really, what else could they be? Yo, rap is pushing out bad. No, rap is selling fantasies to miserable people. 
fair enough. All the good shit's still out there, but the fact is the world is miserable, so people are looking to escape. We have to make the world less miserable through other means than preaching love. Like, yeah. like there's so much more. Like, y'all actually put dollars into your community. And I'm not trying to be a shithead here. I don't often like these kinds of songs because I don't think it's it's it doesn't work on me. It doesn't make me feel encouraged. It makes me mm. go, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, this doesn't look like my life. I don't... I try to put out a lot of love into the world, and I say that sincerely. I really do. But it's also a lot of hard work, dedication, sacrifice, compromise, and willing to give shit up that yep. I'm not feeling in these bars. Like, there's a lot of things that don't come along with this. Like, like we're just supposed to all of a sudden make happy music and our problems are going to go away. If we tell everyone that you can be anything, that's a lie. Not everyone can be a graphic designer. There's a limited number of spots available and only the best are going to get it. And there's no fucking universe that's ever going to let everybody who wants to be a graphic designer be a graphic designer. So let's be honest. Like, even if you go to all communism, you just give up personal choice and there's still limited numbers of slots. But maybe in theory, everyone eats like it'll never just be a world where everyone gets to be what they want to be. Yeah. True love for yourself is acknowledging what you're capable of and putting yourself into the world. So I think I just disagree with the philosophy of this song a little bit. Interesting. All right. So I like what they're trying to say, but I take grievance with it. Um, I don't know. Maybe again, I'm reading too much into it or like there's and then I like when she comes back in she sounds really good on this yeah. like they sound really good yeah. and their poetry is deep and the philosophy of what they're bringing to the table is really good like give to love and look over the others who could never see the pure imagery from an existing option that's really cool right like uh, basically acknowledge your privilege and help other people out maybe this is just for middle class fuckers maybe that's just who maybe. the target is like yo middle class fuckers stop like being away I don't really know uh, stop adopting another normality spoken to want a low pace and abolish the motion of willing a method of uber development like are you just saying don't like don't take on the normal patterns of today because you could be different and be but then what about all the things I like about it you know like right. you're leaving this so subjective where the second my de desires don't match yours in any significant way, we go back to the same problems that are faced today. This isn't compromise, it's acceptance. And since we're not talking about compromise in this track, I'm confused. And again, maybe I'm missing the bars. Like, really, I am. They wrote this in a really coded, I'm going to call it pseudoscience poetic way. Like, it's so veiled that, like, it's not effective. Like, you really have to, like, from an accessibility point of view. Like, this is the kind of shit where I call it liberal arts poetry. The only people I know who would listen to this were the liberal arts kids who would read like the really long books with all the adjectives in it. And that's super <laughs> cool. They totally deserve hip hop for them. I'm not even saying, yo, this sounds honestly a four and a half on five. It's a fucking banger. I might not like the message. That's my opinion. I can debate the message all I want. Yeah. Um, but sonically, it is actually really good. And it's so, the beat is fucking phenomenal. Because I realize I've just been bitching for a minute and that's not very good. <laughs> The production's really stellar. The drum pattern is absolutely blew my mind. The way they ride the beat is really good. I love the way she sing raps. I love the way that flows through. I love yeah. the way he comes in. I love the way he hits the double time at one point. It's a weak double time, but I love the way he hits the double time. That was pretty cool. I like the way the beat strips away. The angry voice is coming in through the third verse. But I don't know. I don't really think this level of positive thinking is real. I think it's based on a fairy tale thing. It's the kind of shit that the characters on Friends would call the way to like be positive and happy. So like it only works if your parents own a house and you're going to get it when you die and pay off your credit cards like that. Like it's that kind of shit. It doesn't really take into account suffering. It's just like you can will away your problems, but that's like really not always true, I guess. Yeah. You're not just or maybe it's meant to be like you can use cuz you, you can use your position and your power to speak out and challenge the status quo and use love for something. But I don't know. I just feel like it's this general philosophy that is being presented. Like we have something more profound to say. But when I thought about their profoundness, I'm like, not nah, so dog, profound. <laughs> I don't like your message. I'm not into it. I would actually rather listen to like Griselda tell me how to make a profitable enterprise through good business logic, because I feel like there's a higher takeaway in that for me in my life. Um, to help people to build up an ecosystem for others because fuck like unless we're really going down communism this song does not apply in <laughs> my opinion uh, there's more to you than what you know believe or even choose to be what you ignore 
all right, this part I was in big facts on. There's more to love than the, just the lust and pain, and comfort isn't based on what's the same. All that's actually really big facts too. This third verse is like, okay, big facts. More, There's more in store beyond what you have seen before. Proven action isn't philosophy, and oppressive music isn't hot to be. That's all go. cool. I really like that, but oppressive music's a weird term. I don't know what that means, but actually everything in this verse is fire. It's like, yo, I, w I think this shit's cool. I want to see you grow and aspire. And the way he words it here, it's super concise. It's super fucking clear. They're not veiling the message behind like higher literary skills. It's just fucking dope. So rally around the poplar trees, salute hypocrisy, and floss your property with pride. So what shit, if I buy myself a nice fucking thing, I can't floss it around you or I'm an asshole? That's literally what I took from that. Because here's the thing. I understand that materialism is evil, but I also want to buy nice things. So, like, you're basically saying I'm a bad person with these bars a little bit if I want to floss one day about having an Hermes belt. Right. And if I spent my whole life working to earn that Hermes belt and it's important to me because that's what's important to me, it's actually kind of whack to judge that motherfucker for your perception being different. There's a lot of self-righteousness in this tune. Hmm. That's a self-righteous line, yo. Yeah. And again, you don't have to like it for himself, but when you put yourself out there like that, I guess that's it. We, it's a debate. All of this, you make a track like this, you're entering a debate about, this is the equivalent of indie rappers shooting at the mainstream, but like from a whole other angle. Uh, it's a sweet but bitter victory from whom you disagree. You think it is me. It is I and I is you. Essentially, you and I are not the same, dog. Don't even put us. We, we may even, we don't have the same potential. I don't even feel like that. I feel like you had a, you had an easier childhood than I did listening to your <laughs> shit. Um, it is sweet victory, but you think it's me, but it is I and I is you. So like basically he's, he's saying with that, like you might like come over me with your fucking materialism, but you're not actually better than me because you and I are really the same. We're all flesh and blood. Fuck that. If I work 87 times as hard as you and I make the sacrifices to live right, you and I are not the fucking same. You and I might have the same potential. But fuck that shit. That's my opinion on it. And I'm at this point, yo, because y'all y'all may act like everybody lives the same. But people don't all, we're not talking about like like, you know, privilege and shit. We're talking about how people live their lives. If you wake up and read books every day, and you fucking exercise every day, and you put in that grind every day, and you fucking show love every day, and you honor the word every day. You are not the same as people who do not do that because you try and elevate yourself to a higher position. So if the idea is we can all choose to elevate from the biggest points of degeneracy, I agree with you, but that is not what this shit is saying. This shit is basically going, our purity is better than your malicious bullshit, so fuck y'all. And I'm using a lot more cuss words than them, but I just, I mean, you heard everything in it. Do you, am yeah. I wrong? Do you feel like I'm, I'm wrong in anything I'm saying? Because I might be. I mean, I think it's a little bit different, but I mean... That's all right. I think no, I, I don't. Mean, I don't think you're wrong with what you're saying. And I, I don't. That's, but here's the thing. Like you, sh Bonnie has dated me for a long time, <laughs> and I have these big fucking reactions to certain middle class norms that I find disgusting. And this, which really, is fair. So then maybe I fell for it, and you didn't. No, but I think it's more <laughs> like because of our backgrounds. For but this is really good for you, and I want to bring that up because. A lot of this shit reminds me of stuff that I feel like in my life I actively go to war against. Like these good philosophies are just bad to me, to me. But the, the other people don't agree with me. There are also people who use words like common sense. I don't think common sense is real. I think common sense is called middle class privilege. So when you start looking at things from that point of view, that middle class lives are, yo, if, your parent, if you grew up in a house, shit, you and I are not the same. Your parents are gonna leave you a house Gosh, you're in a tier of life of possibility above everything I've ever had to live to. Like, that's how I, I don't know. I think my point's been made, I guess. I feel like I'm now being redundant. I'd say so. <laughs> Overall, though, I, I do like the technique and the musicality and all of that. I yeah. like everything but the message because, hmm. sure, it's passion, but I'm angry at how vapid your shit is. That's how I feel. Your, your passion made me angry because it insulted my struggle is I guess the feeling like it's so right. cool that y'all have some passion and believe love existed and then you have their angry chants before the happy like ah! like shut like what the <laughs> fuck was that 
Like, I'm not, I don't know, maybe I'm just in a bad mood or something. And if so, I'm really sorry, Ismail. This might be some song you fucking love or something. And every now and again... You let us know whose opinion you felt more in line with. And maybe, like, I just got triggered on some shit. But if I, I would, like, I wouldn't want my kid to listen to this. I'd, I'd be like, don't, don't believe this shit. Like, I would not <laughs> teach my kid that this is the way to be. But I also might be really wrong. Y'all have seen me for years, so you get a sense of who I am. But, yeah, that's where I'm at with this. And for all of y'all watching that are super big fans of the band, and, yo, if any of y'all in the soliloquist of sound happen to see this or come upon this, yo, it's 2020, and the world is fucking different than 2006. And in 2006, I would have called this an amazingly positive, uplifting song. I think the people who... The the, the moms that Macklemore talked about in White Privilege 2 would call this better than other kinds of (laughs) hip-hop. That is the... That's where I would leave this at. All right. Anyway, I'm still giving it from a musicality point a four and a half on five because the message was really like, you get it. Yeah. On that note, since this is, uh, appreciate y'all for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think about it, the message, the sonic, all of that good stuff. Like the video if you yep. did. I mean, I, I know when I go like this, I get a lot <laughs> more dislikes and I get more negative comments. So let me know what you think about all the things I was wrong about or my perspectives. I'm super open to that. But I will answer you, so be prepared to receive that response if you want to go in on me, I guess. I don't know. And that's not like a threat or anything. It's just if I wake up at 6.30 in the morning and you're calling me a bunch of names, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's not the best way to wake up. Yeah. But then again, if you're in the soliloquist of sound and you just watch this review, you might be like, fuck this guy. So all is fair <laughs> on the internet, right? That's the game we are in. Yep. And I'm self-aware like that. Um, special thanks to the patrons as Mel Gadamsey who requested this uh, Jonathan Barnes DJ Black Hurricane Linda Liam Scribble um, and yeah they're all dope they support what we do if you support what we do and you want a track review you can let us know and we'll, uh, we'll do it once a month and that's what it is um, I make music myself you can check that out we're also doing a bunch of interviews and shit if you want to be part of the live activities twitch.tv slash behind that suit and uh, I don't know what else to say at this